New day of coverage here at Freedom Fest, and I'm with Axel Merck, Portfolio Manager for Merck Funds. Axel, good to have you back on Kitco. Great to be with you. So, Axel, how's the how's the conference for you so far? I know you will be taking part in a panel, All-Star Predictions, Bulls versus Bears. Uh, what do you expect to take away from that panel? Well, the Freedom Fest is always very special. As you know, I'm rather pessimistic about the equity markets in particular, okay. mm -hmm. and uh, I think we'll get some fireworks. Um, it's, it's a very engaging panel. And uh, the, the one main thing I'm concerned about the markets is the amazing amount of complacency and as we speak some of that appears to be changing at least for today but um, but overall the complacency is great and people have been buying 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 and to me that's a bit concerning and what do you think about the mood at the conference here this year Axel compared to last year do you sense more optimism when we speak about the US economy well generally speaking because recent data have been a little better, people are a tad more optimistic, but the folks here at the conference, I think, generally take a longer term view, and they're very concerned about many things happening um, in politics, in the US and abroad, and they're just concerned about the purchasing power of, of the dollar and the money. Now, Axel, let's talk to Fed now, since last time you were on was right after the FOMC, and what do you feel the Fed or could or should be doing differently in order to ensure the stability of the US economy while slowly raising rates? The Fed should realize that we don't need low interest rates. What we need is to price credit according to the risk profile of borrowers. The Chinese are incidentally moving in that direction, whereas we are just flooding the market with credit, and that has to create bubbles, that has to be create misallocation. So for the time being, they should mostly get out of the way and allow, allow the market to do what it what needs to be done. All right, get out of the way. Okay. And what do you make of the U.S. dollar's performance so far this year? Well, up until today, whenever we've had a mini crisis, the dollar actually did not benefit. Um, when the money fled the emerging markets a year ago, it went to the euro. Uh, so similarly, in recent risk-off days, the euro benefited more. Um, as we speak, it's the first time the dollar actually benefits um, when, when we have a little crisis in Portugal. Uh, generally speaking, the, the dollar status as a safe haven has certainly taken a big dent. Now let's talk equities and then gold, Axel. So you had warned that you feared equities were in a bubble. Uh, do you think that bubble may be close to bursting? Uh, definitely. Um, uh, when something goes up on the backdrop of less and less volatility, meaning a complacency is on the rise, asset prices are rising, people are not aware of the risks of what they're buying, that has to end badly. It did so in tech stocks, it did so in real estate, it did so in bonds, uh, and, and equities are bound for, for sharp sell-off, even more so because retail investors have been scared out of the markets, and all these pros think they can go out in the heartbeat. Well, let them try, and I think prices are going to tumble pretty badly. Axel, you've been very bullish on gold in the past. Do you remain bullish on the metal? Well, we cannot afford positive real rates. And you mentioned earlier, as the rates may be rising rates, while well, nominal rates might be going up, but inflation is picking up in the U.S. We see that um, generally wage numbers, for example, um, looking that bad, except if you look at full-time employees. Part-time employees don't have pricing power. Um, and, and so when you have these wage prices slowly creeping in and the Fed all but promising to be behind the curve, and you cannot afford positive real rates in the U.S., in the Euro zone in Japan, I think gold should be doing quite fine, especially then if, if we also have a hiccup in the stock market, as I'm pretty confident that will happen. Well, I guess many are expecting to not see much volatility this summer, since we usually say, oh, there's the summer doldrums for gold, but that really hasn't been the case for gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. Yeah, conventional wisdom is often proven wrong, and I think uh, that this will be yet another year where it is. The nice thing about gold, if, if nothing else, it has played its role as a diversifier. Um, even last year with a sharp drop, um, you want something goes down when everything else goes up. Um, so that conversely, when equity markets do come down, um, you've got to have something that, that has a chance of going up. So with gold, how do you know when you should be getting in? Like if you look at this period right now, what would you, what would you say? Well, I think I, I've been talking about complacency. Uh, we use that as a contrarian indicator. When everybody loves something, we tend to get it out and vice versa. And and so in gold last year, towards the end of last year, we bought more gold. Um, and so now, obviously, we, we're not day traders. We like that. But if one day everybody piles back into gold, by all means, you should take some things back, except we think you should keep a core, core holding. And do you like the mining stocks? Well, the miners are finally getting their costs under control, especially the majors. And so the miners have a much better opportunity here to do what everybody has wanted for years the miners to do, to be a levered play on gold. Now, clearly the dynamics are different. It's riskier than gold, and gold itself is already volatile. But um, yes, the miners are finally getting gold costs under control and have been very depressed. And so I think the rally we've had of late uh, might be for real. Finally, Axel, besides gold, what else are you liking these days? 
Well, as you know, we deal a lot of in the currency markets, and the reason is that we think that policymakers will remain very actively engaged in the markets, and the best way to play that is squarely where it is, in the currency markets. Um, we, we have a currency war strategy where we think you can stay a step ahead of the policymakers. You don't may not like what they do, but at least you can short a currency quite easily. All right, Axel, on that note, thank you so much for stopping by. Good luck on your panel today. My pleasure. And thanks for watching our coverage here from Freedom Fest. We'll have more for you. In the meantime, you can email us comments and questions at newsfeedback.kiko.com. Thanks for watching.